Like so many of our cities, the city by the bay has no shortage of problems these days. Reason enough for John Blackstone to catch up with San Francisco Mayor London Breed. Three, two, one! San Francisco's 47-year-old mayor, London Breed, grew up in this city of postcard views. But much of that was not part of her youth. I mean, I grew up in poverty. I grew up in public housing. So I wasn't really exposed early on to all of the beauty that you see now. I didn't know some of these neighborhoods even existed in San Francisco. For this mayor who has risen from poverty, fighting the city's inequality is one of her major challenges. In an area that's home to many of the world's most valuable companies, San Francisco now counts 8,000 homeless people, the fourth highest rate of any U.S. city. And that has been made worse by some of the country's highest housing prices. Smash and grab robberies, along with car break-ins, have become their own postcard, underscored by the fact that police solve less than 7% of those property crimes, infuriating both residents and the city's more than $6 billion tourist industry. You said yourself, many people in the city don't feel safe here any longer. Yeah, and I think that's why we're working on it. We're working on it with making sure we're able to add more police officers. We're working on it by having alternatives to policing to respond to people who are dealing with uh, mental health challenges. After Breed was elected four years ago, she picked up a broom and planned to spend tens of millions a year cleaning the streets. In total, San Francisco is spending one billion city, state, and federal dollars on homelessness. Every single morning, there are people who work for the city and county of San Francisco cleaning up where you wouldn't even know it's the same neighborhood. And even before noon, we're dealing with some of the same challenges of some of the litter and the feces and the urine and some of the other issues that many of us are frustrated over. Those frustrations, particularly over crime, may be making this famously liberal city a little less liberal. In a recall this month, voters threw out the district attorney, critics called soft on crime. Yes! That followed the recall in February of left-leaning school board members who focused on renaming schools rather than reopening them during the pandemic. On the national stage, politics here are a juicy target for critics on the right. It is now basically San Francisco, a tech mecca, surrounded by a filthy moat of degeneracy, lawlessness, criminals. And a 549er and, team. And, and drugs. Uh, it is rhetoric with a long legacy. That was amplified in 2007 when a San Francisco Democrat, Nancy Pelosi, became the first female speaker of the House. Republicans, Newt Gingrich among them, talked disdainfully about San Francisco values. I mean, Nancy Pelosi represents a San Francisco value system. What are San Francisco values? I think San Francisco values really consist of pushing the envelope and willing to try things that may make people uncomfortable for the purpose of really turning people's lives around. It seems to me the problem that San Francisco faces is that for people on the right, it's become shorthand for liberal crazies. Yeah, and again, there's nothing I can do about that other than to make sure that we're taking care of our city, we're cleaning it up, we're keeping people safe, and we're doing the things that make the people who live, work, and visit here happy. In December, the mayor broke from the city's often lenient policies when she announced plans to get tough on crime. And it comes to an end when we take the steps to be more aggressive with law enforcement, more aggressive with the changes in our policies, and less tolerant of all the bull that has destroyed our city. I looked at the police dashboard, you know, the retail theft. That's up this year. Is and your I, crackdown on crime working? I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's a fair assessment to take statistics and then to equate them to a major headline around San Francisco being dangerous, especially in light of when you look at our homicide rate in particular, and when you look at the number of cases we've been able to solve and the number of people that we've been able to hold accountable. FBI violent crime statistics confirm at least 65 other cities have higher rates of murder, rape, and assault. But highly visible crimes, car thefts and shoplifting, are up nearly 17% so far this year compared to last year. 
I don't think numbers mean anything when something happens to you. And so ultimately, you know, we got to do a better job with improving how people feel in the city. Among the improvements the mayor is proud of is a transformed corner in a tough neighborhood. So on the corner of Hyde and Turk, this used to be a notorious area where there was a lot of drug dealing and drug using and all kinds of things going on there. You go there today and there's a park, a brand new park there, and kids are now using the park. Let me ask you just to explain San Francisco to an outsider. <laughs> Ooh, that's a hard one. Complicated, unique, beautiful, crazy, wild, fun, innovative, challenging, all of those things and more. Like any other American city, San Francisco has plenty of problems. But much like any other big city mayor, London Breed is her city's biggest fan. I love San Francisco, even though it's a complex city with all of its challenges, its issues, but it's a place of beauty, it's a place of hope, it's a place of opportunity.